um, once we put the lime down then we'll reseed them this one will be reseeded as grass the one to the south of us will be reseeded as um, something arable probably oats maybe corn I don't know something that is a seed Okay, not following you that so yeah anyway so that's that's where we're at at the moment um, and I've only got whatever it was 15 cows so far because I'm trying to gauge are we producing enough food for them uh, one of the things obviously we don't have at the moment is enough mineral feed which is why we've still got stocks of silage hay and straw in the mixing area we're out of mineral feed um, but if I load mineral feed in there it's just going to use all of it and drop it all in the cow feeding trough and I think with 15 cows that's probably going to last us a couple of years I'm actually quite surprised okay we're not spreading significant amounts of fertilizer on the field here but um, visually it's making a difference on the precision farming map so and, and also okay I did not need to use GPS for this job it's just kind of easier and more efficient that way the plot thickens achievement unlocked ah I'm guessing I've fertilized a significant number of um, acres all of a sudden um, but yeah so because we have automatic spraying we've got the tractors crop sensors um, I could just drive all over this field and eventually cover it it's just doing it with GPS a allows me to talk about GPS in the game because we haven't really used it yet and also um, allows me to use the fewest possible runs up and down the field doing it don't plan to put GPS on the uh, Massey Ferguson before anybody asks that's as I said that's our yard tractor doesn't need crop sensors doesn't need um, GPS at least not right now Our last series we used um, Valtra G, which I like as a tractor. Uh, it's it's not as costly as an N, and part of the problem with the N is that um, yeah, it's it's designed for an engine that can do 200 horsepower, which is all nice and good but we really don't need to do 200 um, horsepower on a small tractor but with the G the frames about the same size but it's the engines limited to 145 and so the overall cost of the tractor is a little bit lighter um, it probably is a tiny bit smaller physically um, but it's it's a good functional small field tractor even on a on a big farm when you want to do spraying you don't need the huge tractors and the problem with huge tractors is they cost money to maintain and so that can be detrimental to your farm quite quickly This tractor is, is fully kitted out as a starter tractor. So we've got front loader arms, we've got a crop sensor. We currently got narrow tires on it. We may eventually migrate it up to uh, one of the primary carting tractors that we use. But it's always going to have a job on field work, at least until it just gets too old and too costly to maintain. 
which is a potential. And as I said, yeah, this kind of job you don't need GPS for uh, because of all of the sensors on the systems. You know, it, it, it applies it where it needs to. Um, but harvesters, I do... While I can do eyeball harvesting, you know, so long as I'm, I'm at the edge of the row and just driving down the row, I'm getting everything. With GPS, you can do alternate rows or cut cut-ins, and thus keep everything on the line. I I do watch a number of farmers, and so I get some ideas on how real life farming takes effect. But in the real world, I'm a computer programmer, so I think how does a computer program what what logic has a computer programmer used to make something work? And it's it's when you, when you are logically minded and a computer programmer, you tend not to play. While you can play games for fun, there is frequently this underlying. Um, what has the programmer done to do this effect? So, for example, um, oops, way back in the day, a um, friend of mine played X-Wing. And he was getting frustrated with some of the missions. You know, you've got to protect five shuttles and shuttle three would get destroyed and, oh, you've lost the mission. And it was, you know, it was a long, hard slog of figuring out how do I play this game. However, what he then did was he figured out that when Shuttle 3 got destroyed, there was a message appeared at the bottom of the screen that said, Shuttle 3 was destroyed by TIE Fighter 4. And at that point, he figured out that, okay, all I need to know is which... TIE Fighter has been programmed to destroy a shuttle and I just have to target those TIE Fighters. I don't have to target any of the others. I have to kill all the others but the primary targets are the ones that are destroying the stuff I'm supposed to protect. <coughs> and the game was old enough that only one enemy TIE Fighter was programmed to destroy one shuttle. And it was literally a case of if you've, if the mission has been running for four minutes twenty four seconds, and Tie Fighter Four is still alive, then Shuttle Three gets destroyed, and that's literally how the game logic worked. And so all he did was, whenever he failed a mission, he took note of the messages that came up that were telling him he'd failed the mission, and what. And, and those messages would give him his priority targets and then from that point onwards he would play the mission destroy the priority targets, don't die and then destroy everything else and you know, the game became super easy at that point because he'd figured out what the programmers had made the pro you know, had programmed into the game um, and it's similar here you know, it's even playing with precision farming, my mind is always working, okay, if I want to get this result, what do I need to do? And then we look at real life situations and say, okay, and how do we make this, how do we justify it and make it realistic? Because I do like the idea of at least somewhat of playing realistically. So since since we have a GPS already set up on this field, it looks like we'll just be able to do it straight into the next field over. So that will be the plan. Oops, we're a little bit close to the log in the hedge there. OK, 
keep that back. There we go. So, and then yeah, as soon as you engage GPS, the tractor will center on that line. So as I said, yeah, this this is a big piece of kit. So don't have to use it. Now with a spreader, GPS definitely an awesome tool because you can set the GPS working width to the width of the spreader without actually being able to see what the width of the spreader actually is. Because it tells you how it, it spreads out to 18 meters. Well, that's nice, but you know, functionally, how wide is that on the field and thus where do I position myself so that I'm not wasting anything over the edge? Yes. Oh, good grief, lime. Yeah, and because lime is such a high-use thing. Um, and we will be doing... Well... We'll be mowing this field... I think we're going to be mowing this field in October. Um, that's when it should be a full level. But as soon as this field has been mowed, we'll be able to spread some lime on it just because of the amount of uh, harvesting we've been doing. And then replant it with grass. I think I'm going to have to cultivate it just because um, a direct drill does not plant grass where there is already grass. Um, in our other field, what's this, 52? In field 51, that we're going to next um, the um, the direct drill will work on it because we will be planting something different than grass and so a direct drill will replace what's in in the field Do the headland at this end. I might actually do a headland at the other end. Just because it does make it a little bit easier to turn around. And then we'll get back to the field I was actually intending to fertilise today. Yeah, now part of them, I mean, one of the things that I do occasionally avoid using GPS on a series, especially at the beginning of a series, is because it's not available. Um, so I commonly don't put GPS on every single piece of equipment because I still need to be able to keep my eye in um, because when you know, Farm Sim 22 comes out, it came out no GPS and if I want to do all of the things I need to know how to do it without GPS the problem I had in Farming Sim 17 was I was so constantly relying on GPS that when 19 came out it's sort of oh I suck at doing everything because I can't you know I've lost the skills for doing it manually and drink the last of the tea before it's stone cold but yeah no, GPS is just yeah oh, sorry not GPS precision farming is just playing with the numbers and learning the ins and outs of it. So base game, for example, you fertilize everything twice and um, you're good to go. Um, you lime it, you make sure it's not, not being plowed 
and you deal with the weeds. But in in base game, if you use herbicide on a field, then um, you will reduce the yield of that field. Potentially, you can get yield up to plus one hundred percent. With precision farming, the yield that you can expect from a field is based on the soil quality. So if you are um, harvesting, um, oh, what is it? If you are harvesting on loam, you can get up to 125%, which is way lower than base game. Um, if you're harvesting on clay, then I think the maximum you get is about 80%. So clay is a really bad soil type. But if it's what you've got, you still need to work on getting your production as high as you can. Um, we started off today by spot spraying that field there with herbicide, which I was a little bit reticent about doing because potentially putting herbicide on a field will degrade your yield. However, that wasn't shown to be the case looking at the numbers. So at that point, we're looking at it and saying, fine, let's just do what we do. Um, normally a base game I would frequently recommend mechanical weeding because it keeps your yield at maximum unless you're the sort of person who just wants to turn weeds off but it's it's learning how to manage them they are in the game and so being able to manage weeds is part of the thing the same with rocks and rocks for me has been serious frustration and part of the reason is, is I, I still to this day have not figured out what pieces of equipment create rocks, whether they create small rocks, medium rocks or large rocks. Um, I know how to handle rocks. Dealing with them is easy, but it's just the whole how are they created thing that I still have yet to figure out. Um, thankfully... Um, to a YouTuber, Derriere Farms, um, I now know that if you do direct drilling, so use a seeder that does not require cultivation first, your first stage of weeds will be medium. And, um, and so you need to plan ahead for that. If you're using a direct seeder, make sure you've got a hoe because a weeder will never work for you if you're using cultivate then drill and your drill does not have does not need a cultivator before um, let's, let's look at that so seed so one of these plant seeds that plant seeds and recommends you have wheel weights that just plant seeds again but we get to here this seeder offers the possibility to seed directly no previous cultivating or plowing is necessary this seeder will generate medium weeds this seeder will generate small weeds so because it generates medium weeds you need a hoe to deal with medium weeds not a weeder and there's one hoe on the market uh, let's go to weeders we just pull out blah 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 this can only be used in first growing stages of crops um, actually small weeds this is a hoe hoes pull out small and medium grown weeds so that you need if you're direct drilling direct seeding or you can use herbicide but as i said base game i don't really want to use herbicide because it damages the crop yield. With precision farming running, there's no crop damage using uh, um, herbicide. So for this season, I've decided we can go ahead <coughs> and use a sprayer.
it needs to have the, the spot spray sensors on it and they are incredibly expensive effectively doubling the uh, the cost of the the sprayer so we'll add those we've dealt with the weeds this year well no we haven't yes we have we've dealt with the weeds this year we're going to put grass in the field on the other side of the uh, yard of the hedge and grass doesn't seem to generate weeds and this side we're going to plant something arable which will generate weeds so we're going to have to weed this side of the field again now I think if I look here the fertilization of this field hasn't improved and the reason is is the fertilization score part of the environmental score only takes effect when you harvest so we're going to have to mow that field to actually see the environmental score jump same with this field same with the one we're about to do but the one we're about to do is already scoring 99 and that's because when we harvested it it had full lime full fertilization oh no don't do that what did I just press Oops. GeForce gaming attachment no idea what that does but uh, well, it looks like you might not have seen it So anyway, yes, we have this field to do, we have that field to do, and then I guess we can move on to second day in September. It's getting late in the day. Um, since it's afternoon now, I am going to check sales. There's still just that. That's our additional weight. Oh, now that's cool. I don't think that's an option of a standard one. That's cool. As I said, not inclined to get a skid steer. We've got a tele truck, and the tele truck uses skid steer attachments, um, but it's sufficient to do what we've been doing with it. Um, both our tractors now have front loader attachers, so we can do all the front loader stuff quite happily. GPS on this. That was my first goal. Was GPS on this? Um, oh, we still. Yeah, I still need to decide whether I'm going plus ten or plus twenty horsepower on the Massey. We put the wheel weights on it. I don't think there's anything else I need to put it in the shop for. So it's just rechipping the engine. We've still got over a hundred thousand money. Uh, that one there, farmland, that field. As I said, 183, but it's at plus 12 percent at the moment. This field here also a consideration. Good arable. Um, again, it's a little bit more pricey, but 110. Uh, we could have bought that. Um, 56 it's another good field we can afford 57 another good field we can afford there's a arable only farmyard this I think is the only farmyard that does not come with an animal husbandry but um, and I was thinking about buying that and the adjacent fields but I ended up going for this one And it keeps our Saturday theme of uh, how many animals can you get? Um, 
last series was on Oakfield Farm, which the map supported 1,500 sheep. So we did that a couple of times. Um, I ended up, I think, we were selling 750 sheep every spring. Uh, so that the following winter, they would breed out to 1,500 again. So we would have a mass of um, wool produced during the spring and a mass of uh, meat produced to sell and it was the trick was not selling the youngest of the sheep because if you do that then they're not worth much and as we start maxing ma maxing out our barn we will possibly start selling cows as well frequently didn't look how much um, how much milk we have um, we have a little bit of milk so I'm probably going to want to deal with that at some point and we'll just run down here and that field is now done pH that's lime that's so yeah you can see grass fields really don't need a lot in the way of nitrogen is that about 80 60 60 yeah tiny amount there's a different level of 40 uh, 40 at the bottom what's that soil Sandy loam, but loamy sand and sand and uh, what's that loam? Oh, that's the two best soil types, and that's that's why we're basically looking at this being an arable field. There's poor soil up this corner, but most of this field yield will yield very well. So, uh, definitely, the plan for the farm is to grow stuff on this field. So, I think, what are we going to do? We will go round this field 